Once, when we were visiting Thailand, a cab driver tapped Greg's stomach and head. Happy Buddha, he said. Me and my mom had a big laugh about it. Greg did too. For the rest of the vacation, whenever there was a quiet moment, he would tap his head and cup his belly. Happy Buddha, he said. Greg never seemed too bothered about being bald. When he came downstairs with that weird tuff of hair on his head though, Greg looked like a school kid on Christmas morning. He kept running his hand through his scalp as if he were petting a dog. Greg announced he was trying a new hair cream. Obviously, it was doing a good job. We didn't disagree. My mom kept tilting her head during breakfast. The hair hadn't grown evenly, but it did grow. She would trim it in the evening, she finally said. I had never seen Greg get excited about the prospect of a haircut. That morning, he did. The man was in a stellar mood. That was, until I asked him where he got his new cream from. The dark web, he said, sheepishly. I started to lecture the idiot about how he should never order anything off the dark web. But mom told me not to take that tone with him. With as much sweetness as I could muster, I told Greg the internet is littered with tales of terrible purchases. He had no idea where the cream came from. It could easily be poisonous. He ran his hand through that weird tuft of hair. Again. Greg said he was feeling great. Before she left for work, Mom took a closer look at his scalp. Everything seemed in order. If the cream wasn't irritating to the skin, there probably wasn't any harm in using it. She works at the hospital, but her diagnosis didn't convince me. In the afternoon, when Mom was at work and Greg was watching TV, I snuck upstairs and took a closer look at the hair product. It wasn't difficult to find. The cream sat prominently in the middle of the bathroom mirror, as if it were a trophy. Happy hair, the jar read. There was a picture of a stock image handsome man next to the labeling. Nothing else. No information about contents, or who made it, or even a barcode. Clearly, Happy Hair was a product of the murky waters of the deep internet. The cream itself was pink and smooth and smelled faintly of vanilla. I didn't want to get any of it on my fingers, so I closed the lid back shut. The labeling of the jar barely held together. Beneath the photoshopped man, there was something else different packaging. I started to work away at the label with my nails, yet I didn't get far. Greg was standing in the doorway. His hair had grown considerably. He also had a five o'clock shadow that he could never grow before. Greg asked me why I couldn't just let him be happy. The guy had a bad year. Most of the guides from his touring company walked out at the start of the summer season. He spent every minute of the five-month tourist rush on the phone with folks confused about their bookings and pissed off about their tours being canceled. The hair cream was a pleasant surprise to Greg in a year of disappointments. It wasn't until I saw him sad and hairy in the doorway that I realized that. I, once again, told Greg that he should be careful with products bought off the dark web and let the matter rest. For a couple of weeks, at least. Greg's hair and beard grew thicker and longer by the day. At the start of the week, the guy looked like a thumb. By the weekend, Greg looked like a chubby Jesus. He was beyond excited, and I must admit, it was nice to see him happy after the past couple stressful months. Initially, I got used to Greg's new look, but little by little, I started to notice there was something wrong with the hair. Though it looked healthy and lush, there was a strange sort of shimmer to it. When I looked at his beard in the right light, it seemed to be gently moving. I had stopped lecturing Greg about how he shouldn't buy things off the dark web, but the new developments with his hair gave me pause. Greg, as predicted, would hear none of my concerns about his beard moving on its own. Apparently, I was just imagining things. I knew I couldn't convince the man, but I took it upon myself to take another closer look at the hair serum. When I first checked the jar, the cream was pink and solid and smelled sweet. 
When I checked it again the first time, the color had faded only slightly. There was a trace of yellow in the jar now. The product also turned ever so slightly watery and some other smell was lingering in its nose. I worked away at the packaging with my nails once more. This time, as if the makers of the cream had started to slack off, the label came off right away. Beneath the generically handsome stock image man, the true nature of the happy hair revealed itself. Thick black letters that read GH058. I did a quick Google of the code name, but nothing showed up. That didn't make me any calmer. I took a second sniff at the hair cream, trying to place the smell, trying to figure out what had changed over the past two weeks. Beneath the faint smell of vanilla, there were even gentler notes of scent, unpleasant smells, the odor of rot and death. Before I could fully place the stench that lingered on the back of Greg's hair cream, I was interrupted once more. This time, it wasn't my stepdad who was watching me from the doorway. It was my mom. When she saw that I peeled off the labeling, she lost her shit. My mom gave me a 10 minute TED talk about how I shouldn't touch Greg's things without permission. And then while leading me by the hand, she forced me to go apologize to him. I tried once again to convince them that buying cosmetic products off the dark web was a bad idea, but neither Greg nor my mom would hear any of it. Defeated, I retreated back to my room. Over the following week, not much changed about Greg's hair. It still shimmered in the light and there still seemed to be a gentle sort of movement to it. There was definitely something weird about it, but it was a mere suggestion of unusualness. It wasn't until Greg opened a new jar of his happy hair that things got truly disturbing. Overnight, his lush brown hair had turned coarse and straw-like. I commented on the change the moment I saw it but Greg denied it wholeheartedly. When his hair turned even more sparse and sickly the next day, he still refused to accept there was something wrong with the cream. He said he was feeling fine. Greg said he was feeling fine, but it was clear that even he knew there was something wrong with the cream. Had my mom been at home, she would have talked some sense into him. Much of the color had faded from his hair and Greg was turning pale was obviously sick. My mom, however, was on a week-long work trip abroad and took all of my concerned calls as the products of an overactive imagination. Seeing that she wouldn't help, I decided to take a third look at Greg's hair cream. The change in the product was crushingly clear. The cream had lost much of its texture and color. It was now a watery yellowish pink sludge. It wasn't the look of the cream that truly worried me, however. It was the smell. The faint notes of vanilla were completely gone. Even without putting my nose to the cream, I could smell the undeniable, rancid stench of infection. I tried making my arguments to Greg once more, but he'd hear none of it. His beard and hair had turned white and rides within his skin. There's bags under his eyes and he's clearly running a fever but the guy keeps insisting he feels right as rain. My mom won't be back for another four days, and I fear it'll be too late then. Whatever is in the hair product that Greg bought off the dark web is slowly killing him. I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do. I just wish my stepdad would be bald again. And so concludes another episode of the United People's Institute series. Next Thursday comes the tale of the Mafia, chauffeurs, and hair creams, read by Viktor Bujarov. If you can't wait a full week for another episode, drop by patreon.com slash mikejlanger for a full 20-story season and a bunch of other early and bonus content. Also, if you haven't heard the first season of the United People's Institute series, there is a big old jumbo video of it down in the pinned comment for binge consumption. Big thanks to Nora Austin Murphy for lending her voice to the tale and to Repulsive for providing the spooky tunes. If you made it this far into the video, I got a fun little factoid for you. In Czech, we differentiate between head hair and all other hair. Head hair is vlas, and all other hair is flup. 
Does your native language draw a distinction? Let me know in the comments below. Native English speaker? That's fine. The comments are open for you to apologize about your language being too vague. And finally, as usual, a huge thanks to the patrons for making the show possible. Big old thanks to Bob Condurk, Dante Kincaid, Matt, Joyce, Mr. Kubi Pasta, Kus, Christopher Barunda, Dying Son, Charlie Cooper, Paul, Paul Evans, Quiet Pills, Shion, and Larry V. If you want to join these illustrious scientific minds, drop by patreon.com slash Langer. That's it for me this week. Hope everyone is safe, sane, and healthy out there.